What is going on, YouTube? It's Brendan from Market Makers. Happy Thursday, everybody. The title of this video is The Pump and Dump. It is one of two scenarios we are setting up for, I believe, next week. We're going to look at the inflation numbers and go over this. But if we get, as predicted by the Cleveland Fed, a lower CPI, then look for the herd of lemmings that is the market, that is mainstream media, to build up that FOMO, to continue to rally up. We're going to look at these targets because I do believe it will be a capped rally. We have limits to where we can get to before the next pull down, okay? Hence the dump. And of course, if that CPI comes in hot next week on the 13th, the markets could just pull down from wherever they are at. Powell comes out on the 14th, the day after the CPI, and that's a wild card. We don't know what Powell's going to do. He really messed up this last speech. I mean, I don't think he necessarily messed up, but everything he said, the market perceived as dovish. So, Powell basically said, we're going to raise rates higher than the market thinks and keep them for longer. The Fed, you know, the Fed is uh, continued on his mission. They're really adamant about their mission of defeating inflation, yada, yada, yada. Market doesn't believe them. Market keeps rallying, right? So we're looking at this where, you know, we have these volume divergent pumps. I think we're very close to our tops. As my thesis was last week, guys, I told you it looks like to me we're going to pull down some and then rally from a lower level. But I think the caps are pretty much still in place for all of these. Now, you know, I do think Powell has the potential for the Jackson Hole 2.0 moment once again because of how the market perceived this. We had three months of increasing wage inflation. That's the sticky part, the part the Fed doesn't like. We had those big job numbers come out, 263,000 jobs versus 200,000 jobs projected. All these are lagging. These are all lagging indicators, but it's what the Fed looks at. So many of these people on mainstream media, I see them blow their lid about how housing's lagging, this is lagging, that's lagging. Yeah, all that's true, but this is what the Fed is looking at. You got to play the game with the rules that you have, not how you want the rules to be. So knowing this, we're going to look at the market psychology to help us predict where we're going as well. Guys, if you want to support this channel, check out our Discord channel. Again, that sale is for the rest of the year. It's only a couple weeks left, guys. 20 bucks gets you in the room. Fantastic room. Over 100 people joined since we started running the sale. You can look at some of the comments people are leaving in the videos. Really are enjoying it download discord open that verification email click our link come trade with us come get ta from professional traders as well as live streams and a great community this video as all videos is brought to you by bitget for all the cryptos and simple fx trade forex commodities and equities especially the russell not everybody has the russell and the two things i trade the most as you guys know are the russell and bitcoin so let's go ahead and check this out Let's start off, you know, let's start off with the Cleveland Fed. Cleveland Fed now casting. So looking at the year over year, okay, year over year CPI, 7 spot 49 for November, projecting 7 spot 27. I think that's going to rally the market. And it, it could be a whipsaw rally because that comes out, I think Wednesday's the 13th. I don't have a calendar in front of me. I think Wednesday's the 13th. Powell comes out on the 14th. So you could have a 24-hour rally if Powell really stomps his foot down on this rally, okay? If he really wants to get, get this inflation in the market under control, really stop this rally, he could come out super hawkish the next day. So it could be a short rally. But if Powell comes out measured again, remember, measurement has been seen as dovish by the market, the rally could could have more legs. So we got to keep all of that in the back of our mind. Looking at the DXY, as you guys know, we've been talking about, I do believe you're just in a pullback, a backup situation from a larger multi-year Wyckoff going back to 2015 on the US dollar, because I think the Fed is going to get more rate hikes in before a collapse. So they're going to keep raising rates, whether it's 50 basis points, whether he pulls out the big gun here and goes 75 basis points because of the hot job market and wage inflation. But I think they're going to keep raising. And so I think you'll see a return of the dollar up to a level. Remember, in dot com, we got to 121. OK, we got to 121. Now, you don't have to get up there. The market can really just seize up at any point. You could have a, the credit market lock up, some type of financial crisis to occur. But I do think the dollar will show more strength once the market starts to believe that they're going to keep raising rates. He could go 50, 50, 50, 25, 25. We'll see. But look for more upside on the dollar. Meanwhile, on the daily time frame, falling back below your 200, 233, 
this is helping out equities today, but you could just be putting in a double bottom here, right? Powell comes out and talks and we'll see where we can get to on some upward momentum. You know, Q4 is setting up, you know, Q4 is going to be a mixed bag, I think, just like Q3 as far as earnings for the marketplace. So if Q4 is a mixed bag, you know, I really think most of the blood is going to come end of Q1 towards the end of Q1, because March and September, the 245 angles in the GAN calendar, that's when most crashes and most bottoms really either kick off or bottom out. So looking at March, you know, with the Q1 coming out March, April, depending what companies are reporting, but I think you're going to see a lot more market decline happen potentially in March as the reality of the recession that's coming kicks in. And I do believe we're already in a recession, but the lagging data hasn't caught up to it yet. You have to remember what the government considers recessions the National Economic Research Board or Research Council. Back in the GFC, it took them nine months after the crash started to say, oh, by the way, we're in a recession. So they're not, you're not going to know you're in a recession until probably end of next year if you wait for the government to tell you. So you have to use common sense and the reality of the market indicators around you. So we could see this. We want to see the dollar hold 1618, 104 spot 163. And if we're looking at Bitcoin on the weekly. Now, I gave a prediction, as you guys know, I've talked about it many, many times, but that 28% decline, give you guys a trade for it. And again, it's all based off that Dante's descent pattern. Now, I don't want to go over the whole pattern, but I want to look at when that next drop could really happen, the next top. So let's look at it from a top perspective. And I want to do that here. Let's go ahead and take the date range. Part of the Dante's descent pattern was the 20 candles between tops, right? 20 bars. This is a weekly time frame, guys. 20 bars between tops, measuring out these key swing highs. Now, remember this last bar, this last drop that we got, this 28% drop, this happened in that 24-hour turnover window between the candles. So this is going to be something interesting. I'm going to mark this on the chart, but this is your 12 bars, and then your next 20-bar top would be take you out to right here, which is January 2nd, okay? So because we have that extra bar, this this could be that January 9th candle because this is a weekly candle. It'll take you January 2nd to January 9th and then you have the January 9th candle that can go to January what 15th. But, you know, so the 20 bar top, if this continues, you're looking at January 2nd weekly candle. Now, I want to show you a couple of things. So I got some questions on this. Why am I counting these swing highs and not other swing highs? It's one question. And one thing I want to point out before I do show you guys that, of course, is this. Obviously, the all time high was never defeated. And all of these key swing highs that are tracking with market symmetry, these 20 bar tops have never been defeated. OK, they've never been defeated. So when you start looking at where Bitcoin can get to off these swing high levels. This is something that you want to pay attention to. And if we're looking at this, why am I choosing these swing highs? And let's say, for instance, not this swing high. If we look at the date range or the price range here, here, because here's a, here's a swing high, All right, Let's go to measure at 25%. Here's another one. Let's measure this. This one was also 22%. Well, this is really easy to show you. When you're doing sequencing, part of what I learned from reading Merrill's books uh, filtered waves. You know, when you're doing sequencing, you got to look at proportionality and symmetry in the marketplace. 46% up move that I took for that swing high, right? Where do you find that at as well? Down here, 43% up move. So essentially what you're looking at here is you have a 25% move, a 22% move. You have a 46% move and a 43% move. I filtered out these smaller moves. Right now, how do I know it works? That's the subjective part of my pattern that I did. How do I know it works? Because we got the 28% drop within 24 hours of that pattern ending, right? That's how I know it works. The 11 bars down, the nine bars up, 20 bars between tops. So I know that my, my filtering method worked out very well. So that answers that question. And I want to see how this goes, guys. If we get that January 2nd candle, let's go ahead and mark that on the chart so we don't have to keep referencing it. But that January 2nd or January 9th, we weekly candle. So that should be a top. This should be wherever Bitcoin rallies to, that should be the top before it goes its next leg down, okay? Because we've been doing this slinky down the stairs the whole way down. And it's going to be that January 2nd weekly candle or that January 9th, which is going to kind of be right on top of each other. So these two right here, this is what we're looking at for the next leg down to Bitcoin. Where will that next leg go? Let's jump over to the daily time frame. So let's go ahead and take this off. This is some upside projections. 
that next leg down. Next leg down, I would be looking, I believe it comes out to 13,820 is what I'm looking at. Yes, 1618 at 13,820. But most of you want to see where this potential pump and dump rally could take us, right? So let's go ahead and look at this for a pump and dump rally. You know, just without even using fibs, guys, your target here that you really want to pay attention to is that 200 on a daily. We haven't touched it since what March or April of this year, March or April. That's how long it's been since we've battled that daily 200. And this can give you a key trading opportunity. Notice, of course, your 233 is up much higher, 23.8. So let's go ahead and just get a FIB projection. We're going to look at this in the smaller time frames as well. But just looking at a FIB projection in this in this fashion has given us some really nice trading ranges here. The 618 at 17119 on the daily. And the 1618 at 19788. I don't know how much this will come down between now and a week from now, but we could see this come down more towards our 1618 at 19788. So we'll be paying attention to that. But you know, obviously your levels that you really need to look at defeating here, staying above the 618 at 17119, which has just been clustering our candles side by side, 760 at 175, one fib at 18.1. And again, I do believe there will be a cap to this rally. And for Bitcoin, it's going to be impacting that 200 on the daily. Okay. The 200 on the daily is going to be a key impact area if you can get there. So we need to cycle down through the smaller time frames. But let's look at a couple of things here. MFI not showing us a whole lot yet. Volume momentum still really low. ATR is still a little bit elevated. So let's go ahead and bounce over to something on the eight hour because I want to show you this on the eight hour. Eight hour your volatility is kicking up a little bit because we're going on a little bit of a pump now. So we're at 17.2 right now as I'm recording. Watch 17.312. This is where I put a short in the room the other day. We got a nice decline down here all the way down to... Uh, this came all the way down to what, 16,675. So this is a nice decline from that little scalp trade. So what you want to look at is your impact here. Are you pumping up to 17,312 again? And you're going to see this, guys, because I do think these markets, we're going to get into equities, they seem to be holding key support. And with the dollar kind of dropping, you got some opportunity to move up. But look at your eight hour. 18,454, your 200, 233. You're in this tight, confined range here on your fibs from this little fib wave projection. But something I want to show you here, looking at your MFI, it's at the median line. Like I said, your ATR is slightly elevated. Let's check the Caterpillar because we want to look at volatility contraction and look what you're doing. This is part of the reason why I think you got a move coming in, right? So we know the CPI projected to come lower. You get this expansion. So I gave you that 28% drop and you look at the contraction. Okay, you're contracting for your next move, and that next move I think is going to be up and then down. So this is what I'm looking at here on the eight-hour time frame. You can see this as well. Look at your you just defeated the 200 on the four hour, pumping up more towards that 233. Okay, you got to stay above it. We'll see if it can stay above it or not. But you're seeing this same contraction. I'm not going to show you that all the fibs again because they're all the same levels, but you're seeing this exact same contraction on the four hour. Look at this, you're bottling up and obviously you can get nice big expansion. So you do have a move coming in. Will Bitcoin lead the equities? We shall see. I think your range here is limited for now until we get that big catalyst in the market, right? To really FOMO up everybody, get that inflation is coming down narrative. The inflation's coming down. Nobody looks at the totality of everything with the economy slowing down, inflation being super high. It's gonna, just think about the amount of economic damage we had to do to the housing market and what you saw in the manufacturing numbers, which came in at the bottom of the pandemic low, okay? That amount of damage was required just to drop the CPI by a point. And we have to get all the way down to 2%. Again, this is going to be, it's unprecedented, guys, what's going to happen in the marketplace. I saw Kathy Wood was out today. As we, I'm going to say that as we click over to equities. Oh, actually, I'm going to show you EGLD. This was a request in the comments. Kathy Wood was out, yeah, I guess, yesterday saying this is the most inverted the two-year, 10-year yield curve has been since Paul Volcker was in an office when he raised rates to 20%. So, again, I gave you all those metrics. I don't want to repeat it every video, but we always get some new members, new people, new subs, you know, nine times. 
times inflation's been above 5% since World War II, all nine times you had a recession. And of course, 82% of the yield curve is inverted 100% of the time. 100% of the time you had a recession. And we know because of market history, what recessions do, S&P average minus 35%. And this is a bubble cycle. You guys know that watch this channel. So I anticipate at least a repeat of what we've done the last two bubbles, which is minus 50% on the S&P, which means you would basically be almost tripling where you are right now. So that's if we just do what we've done the last two bubbles. Let's go ahead and look at EGLD. First thing I want to do, guys, I want to go ahead and throw this and some type of Wyckoff trading range here. Give me my volatility. Allow me to do my DNA market blueprint here to see where we can get to. Something like this. This is what throws off a lot of Fibonacci traders when you're in Wyckoff because you're going sideways in accumulation distribution. You know, they're measuring all these individual waves and you certainly can. I like to establish a blueprint for the trading range and you can see how elegantly it tracks. Okay, look at this. You're getting rejected at the 382 at 4565. Your 200 is right here at 54. Again, depending on the strength of any type of rally, assuming this will move up if Bitcoin does start moving up strongly. Your 618 obviously is at 50 spot 45. All Always a key target. Your one fibs at 58.20, and your one six one eight is up there at seventy dollars. I think to get to that seventy, and maybe I'm wrong because I don't track this asset on a regular basis. But I think to get to that seventy, you're going to have to have a low CPI as well as a dovish pal to give the market some more legs. But I think these goals here of the fifty and fifty eight, potentially based on this trading range that you've established, could be very realistic. Okay, so just keep that and. Um, and you're, if you are trading that, just keep that. I was about to say in the back of your mind, but I'm trying not to repeat the same phrases over and over again. <laughs> All right, S&P guys, equities. Looking at equities, clearly defined downtrend. And you know, looking at this, obviously I have this in Wyckoff as well. I told you your cap here for any type of rally, I think is your weekly 50, which is basically 4120. I told you I didn't think we'd even get to that. And so far my thesis of pulling down and then going up seems to be playing out beautifully. But let's look at this because I just wanna show you what I think this is, okay? I'm looking at this and th this to me is nothing more than a law of three pattern all right market moves in threes this is what you're doing so basically you just have an abc correction regardless if this goes up another 100 points 150 points or doesn't come back up here at all your next move is down this is what makes sense to me okay you can go sideways for a while but your next move is down you just did an abc correction essentially inside a wyckoff because it, to defeat this and come up would be super bullish and the global economy is getting worse not better so my thesis, and I could always be wrong, I don't think I'm wrong at all in this case, So my thesis is this is a capped rally that will come back to the downside. And looking at this on the daily time frame, they don't have a clear Fibonacci target for where we got to up here, but you have your 200, 233. You do have your 50 curling up. S&P on a bit of a pump. Again, the dollar is turning down. 764 is at 4016. The S&P is at 3972 right here. You can come back up here. 4158 at the one fib. If we do get that whipsaw rally, uh, 4158 would be above the weekly 50. So I think you're, that's basically your ceiling if you're just looking at this here on the daily time frame. Looking at your volume, yeah, nothing impressive here. We had a volume divergent rally to whole rally up. If we look at, let's look at our indicators here. What's the money flow and everything doing? Money flow is kicking back up more towards the median line. You know, volume momentum still negative. ATR is slightly elevated. Uh, you're going to see this. A lot of this big news, you're just going to, I think you're just in chop here. You're holding your 618 at 3929. You see that for support? You're just in chop until we get that until we get that CPI on Wednesday. Get the CPI, you're going to see some market movements. And these are your targets you want to look at in the S&P. Don't trade the S&P, not very often anyways, because, you know, why trade the S&P when you can trade the Russell, which had an over 70 PE, I think, the last time I looked, which I guess now is probably two weeks ago. But 70 PE versus the other indices, which are, what, at 18, 19, 20? So lots of zombie companies in the Russell. You can trade the Russell on simple FX. You can't trade it on every exchange. The Russell is there. It Russell and Bitcoin are the two assets I trade the most because of volatility and because if you understand the, these market movements in the Russell and Bitcoin, they track so identically together. You guys know that we've been tracking Russell 
Golden Bitcoin on this channel for over a year. Pumped right up to the weekly 50, got rejected. Dropping, you're at 1826, you got a little bit of a rally to go. And this is the same thing I just showed you on the S&P. It's just doing the same type of corrective move here in a bear market, okay? This is a bear market, law of three, wherever this gets to up here, down here, if this is the top, next move is down. Looking at the daily. Daily time frame, the Russell, the targets laid out beautifully here, right? I also like to judge my assets by how the targets are laying out, the targets being the fibs, how well they're respecting it, makes it easier to look at trades. Felt we got rejected at the 764. As you can see, we have the 618 coming across from the pandemic low, providing clear resistance. Do we, I talked about shorting up here on my YouTube channel, also posted the trades as well. Got this great drop on the Russell. Lots of people happy about the Russell trade. And now we're getting some volatility back and forth. So if we did rally back up, got to defeat the 618 at 1845. Let me show you what's going on with the Russell and why this why the there's a lot of headwinds here especially being that there is a potential for a whipsaw let's look at just the moving averages the long term let's throw the 100 on here which i never use but there's some algos that use it so let's throw it on there and then let's look at the 233 so 100 233 and the 50 beneath it all right so this is what's going on with the russell you have the 100 moving average right now providing resistance your 233 laying pretty much across that 764 fib gave you gives you a great target for the price to move up to if we get that low cpi and if we do come up higher i'm looking at that 618 fan somewhere in that area of that low 1900s okay we get to the low 1900s excellent shorting opportunity as it develops you got to build a top right so we're going to go over that in the channel when the time comes but this is where we're looking at right now and so you have the 50 as support 100 as resistance you're just caught in this range i think you're going to be in this chop until we get some further market clarity which will happen next week so you can just be doing this right what you've been doing just be doing this making shapes back and forth i do think that catalyst will be strong enough if we do have a drop in the cpi to really propel the market up and give us a really, really nice entry. Looking at Tesla, I expect Tesla to rally with the broader market if we get our pump and dump with the low CPI. And Tesla just lost its 233 on the weekly. Again, the one fib at 182 was key support area. You're getting a lot of chop in here. You're 200 slightly below you on the weekly at 163. Flipped us over to the daily. Little fib wave projection here, 1618s at 169, what you did hit. So Tesla could be, you know, if we get to, because this is a week away, Tesla could be putting in some type of double bottom here to rally up the broader market and come back up. This would be your week or your daily 50 and your 233 and 200 are higher up. Your daily 50 would be right here at 206, guys. So you could see Tesla try to make some moves back up here, maybe get above this. Got to see what the broader market decides to do. Flip it over to some Forex really quickly. Looking at the Euro, guys, Euro dollar. Most widely traded Forex pair. Again, you can trade all this stuff on simple FX. Weekly 50, providing you resistance. Now, if the dollar dumping, seeing this on the weekly, got out of Wyckoff here. You're getting a lot. This FIB laid out was really clean, 0.5 at one spot, 05816. Okay, this has been excellent resistance for you. Got to see how the dollar plays out with next week. And looking at this on the daily time frame, pumping back up, could be painting what could end up being a double top here. Be very careful if you're trading Forex pairs with all. The, with the Fed meeting next week. It's all going to depend on what Powell says and what that rate hike is that he sticks in there. But this could end up being a really nice double top. So look at your previous areas of where you got to up here, one, oh, one spot 05964. Let's see how this plays out here on the daily time frame. And if you do get dollar strength, if Powell comes out with 75, or if he gives guidance for further strong rate hikes, I would expect this to come back down again and break down into the range. Could end up being an awesome trade. GBP USD still hitting your VWAP. Again, this FIB laid out beautifully as well. 0.5 at one spot, 23050, providing excellent resistance. But with the dollar weakness moving back up a little bit, you can see this on the daily time frame. Daily time frame looking a lot like the euro dollar above your 200, 230, 
43 and potentially riding back up for what could end up being a double top or if you get some more upward momentum in the next couple of days could end up being a head and shoulders type pattern so just something to watch and track i'm not doing anything on forex until i see what pal decides to do looking at gold gold gave you that nice golden fib the golden ratio the 1618 1802 gold and silver will track to equities guys if equities do rally you could see some upward movement but you could also be capped here you have your weekly your, your daily 233 the 1802 it gave you excellent resistance before so we'll see if gold can hold up and looking at silver, same thing. Excellent resistance on a 618 at 23 spot 13. Could be painting a double top here. But you can also get a breakout if we do get that equities rally off a lower CPI. Maybe get some candles up here. Could be stronger. We'll see how it plays out in the marketplace. Getting some good volume here on silver. Silver has a higher beta than gold. So if you guys do like trading metals on simple, definitely check out silver. But let's see what PAL does because this is going to move with the markets. Remember, you, most people think metals move inverse to the markets. They do not. They are not moving inverse to the markets. In the great financial crisis, gold went down 34% while the S&P dropped 57%. So you can have it drop less, but it's going to move because these will be these are assets that are liquidated by large institutions like banks when they need liquidity. But that gives you better buying opportunity because if the Fed does pivot, if they do pivot before inflation is all the way down at 2%, you're going to see the metals move up quickly. Oil, oil continues to weaken, fell below the 74 spot, 701 of the golden ratio at 1618. I had a lot of support of oil at 770 to 75. And again, oil, very volatile asset. But as economies slow down, as uh, you know, we still have lockdowns going on in China with global recessions on the precipice. Even though supplies are capped, there's a lot of oil weakness still right now. It could reverse, but right now, guys, primary downtrend. Let me zoom out so you can see this right along that 45. I I mean, this is extended at this point. You see this extended primary downtrend. You're starting to go sideways here. Maybe make more a little bit more of a white cough box. Not interested at this point. Too many variables in oil. I'll keep you guys in the loop though. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely like and subscribe to the channel. Get the good word out. Give us a follow on Twitter, guys. Talk to you all Sunday kickoff show. Be safe. Have a fun weekend.